For more than 12 years, with our nation at war, the men and women of our armed forces have known the measure of danger that comes with military service. But year after year, tour after tour, they have displayed a selfless willingness to incur it by stepping forward, by volunteering, by serving and sacrificing greatly to keep us all safe. And today we pay tribute to a soldier who embodies the courage of his generation. I don't know if I'll ever have a full grasp on it. I mean, it was the worst day of my life. But sort of the magnitude of the events are kind of, especially with everything that's happening, starting to come to light. But I don't think I'll fully grasp and comprehend it all, ever. It's a chance to get, you know, the names of those that were killed that day out into the world. Let their names be known, their stories be told. I always wear this KIA bristle with all their names on it. And um, it's Captain Farah, Sergeant Mersman, Corporal Roquet, Corporal Langevin, Special Saint Corps, and Sergeant Box. I just want their names to be known and the story of what happened that day to be known because, you know, it's, it's only one story, but, you know, it's a significant one. And I feel like it's just the world needs to know what happened that day and what they did for our country. That morning we woke up in the village, you know, at the schoolhouse, and then as the day progressed, you know, it led up to the, the ambush. And, you know, when the first shots rang out and the RPGs came in, you know, I just thought I was going to die. I told myself I'm not going to make it through this one. I thought it was only a matter of time until that happened. And so, like, I made my mission to help, you know, my wounded battle buddies until that happens. That was what I was able to do, and that's what I was going to do. I will admit that I knew some guys better than others. Like Sergeant Box, I met five days before the ambush, so I didn't really know him very well. The same thing with Sergeant Mersman. I haven't had much interaction with him. But um, they were all great guys. They, they were always, like, it always seems like it's always the best of us. You know, Captain Ferrari, you know, he was by the book leader, but, you know, as his RTO, I got to know him pretty well, and he was a great guy. Um, Langevin was, he was my best friend at the time, and so it was, it was pretty rough when we lost him. But he was the kind of guy, like, everybody's drawn to. He's just the one that was always getting us in trouble, you know, making us, getting us to do push-ups, like, all that stuff. But he was a good guy. And um, same thing with, you know, Roque, he was our medic, and he knew his job very well. Langcor, I actually went to basic training with him, too. And so I've known him, I knew him for quite a while. And, you know, one of the things I always remember about him is, you know, in our barracks rooms in Italy, uh, you know, his roommate, his side was always, like, really nice. And then as soon as he crossed over into his side, it's just like a bomb went off. There's just stuff everywhere. And was, every Sunday, that's what his room would look like. And he was, he was a good guy. He liked, yeah, he's a good guy. You go from the military to civilian life, you go from, you know, you know your daily mission, you know what you're gonna do. But when you go into civilian life, there's nobody telling you that anymore. So I kind of made my own mission. Like my next mission was a degree and then a job after that. And then, so if that's my mission, these are the steps I need to take to get there. And I just think that's kind of what set me up to succeed. You know, these benefits that you've earned, you know, you take advantage of them and get that degree. Because, you know, if, even if that's not something you see yourself doing, it's always nice, or you want to start your own business, it's always nice to have that degree to fall back on if things don't work out, you know? And then also, just kind of, you know, with the PTS again, just kind of whatever I'm able to do to kind of realize, help people realize that it's that, that first step, you know, that individual service member, you know, getting, admitting, you know, that, hey, I need some, to go see somebody. Just getting that first step, that's what they need to do. And I'm hoping that I set some sort of good example that, hey, I did that so many years ago, and, you know, things turned out all right for me, so that they'll turn out right for you. Specialist Kyle J. White's extraordinary heroism and selflessness above and beyond the call of duty are in keeping with the highest traditions of military service and reflect great credit upon himself, Company C, 
2nd Battalion Airborne, 503rd Infantry Regiment, 173rd Airborne Brigade, and the United States Army. I'm not the hero that day. Like, I was just put in a situation and I reacted the way I was trained, just like everybody did that day. But the heroes are the ones that gave their lives in defense of our country. 